Proclaim 2023! Please have your seats. I hope you're as excited as we are to be at Proclaim 2023. It's awesome. You look good. And things are happening. So, we have the pastor's mentorship happening every year for five months, where Apostle Mose and a few coaches take pastors through a boot camp and the whole purpose is growth multiplication discipleship and just making sure we get to a thousand in our churches so right here i have two wonderful pastors who are going to tell us their lovely stories and tell us what has happened to them and how their churches have grown go ahead and clap it's yes I'll start with you, Pastor Daniel. Tell us about yourself. Tell us the church you lead, where it is located, how long it has been in existence, and anything else you'd like to tell us. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Ari, and thank you so much, Apostle, for the opportunity of giving us to be here. My name is Pastor Daniel, and I lead a, a church called Christ Pattern Network International. I like the network part. Yeah. I like the network part. We are a network of churches all over the world. But we started from Seta. I am married to one beautiful wife. She's called Pastor Rebecca. She's seated somewhere down there. You can wave to the people. And we are blessed with one son and then many more spiritual children. All right. So, Pastor Daniel, you're going to tell us was it always your dream to be a pastor? Did you go to Bible school? How did you even come to start pastoring a church? Wow. Um, it has never been my dream to become a pastor. Wow. Why? Because I was raised in a place where most of my fathers were pastors. Others are evangelists. And uh, I remember one of my uncles used to discourage me so much to be a pastor. But uh, 2017, I remember when I got a scholarship by the grace of God, and I went abroad to study in China. I was doing metrology. So when I got that opportunity, my biggest dream was like, finally, I've made it. I planned to finish my metrology course, then work with NASA or any, any research or scientific field. Mm, mm. That has been my dream, because now I was in Nanjing University, one of the best meteorological universities in the world. Home here, everybody cheering me up. So I was excited to be a student and also to achieve my career as a scientist. But um, around 2020, when we came back, I came back during COVID to, to get married and get back to continue with my studies. Now, when I came back, somehow, I started enjoying Uganda. Yeah, I was like, uh, COVID, that side is locked here. It's also, let's just continue. So the school gave us opportunity to study online. So I was studying online, waiting for China to open and I get back. As we were waiting, you know, when you are newly wedded, what happened? We were blessed with a baby. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so uh, we said, now why not? Let's just raise a family here and then sometime maybe we shall go back. So, uh, in the process of pregnancy, we started praying and asking God, what next? And as I was processing, my wife document, they had already given her a scholarship in China, but Kiambogo had not given us original document. So, which means she had the scholarship, but they were asking for the document, and she could not get it because she was a pioneer in Kiambogo architecture. Now, that is when I got stuck. I was like, I cannot go back and leave my wife when I'm newly married. Good decision. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to stay. So we started praying oppositely. As others were praying for COVID to stop, I was praying so that the lockdown continues, so that I continue studying online. Meanwhile, I'm at wife. home. Yes. <laughs> so that I'm together with my wife. 
Now, when we are getting our firstborn, he's called Keruso. Keruso means a preacher man. Keruso, yeah. Keruso Daniel. So as we are getting the firstborn, my wife gave birth normally, and he gave birth around 3.15 p.m. At around 6.45, as she was resting, we realized that she was having internal bleeding. Doctors were not knowing, were not knowing. So when we check on her, we realize that she has actually passed on. We call one of the nurse, and the nurse said in Luganda that, on muchala food day. At least I know the word of food day by that time. <laughs> so it became a little bit shocked to me, and at that time you don't know what to do. But some of strength came, then I carried the dead body, and I shook her, then a punch of blood came, then we, we were running to the emergency room, and then the doctor who saw her just confirmed her death. So they said, ah, this, this lady is, has, has died, there's no hope. So they were not chasing me out, then I refused to go out, then they left me in with the dead body. And I started praying for the dead body, I would pray while breathe on her, pray while breathe on her, pray while breathe on her. It took around 35 minutes. And then as I was breathing on her, then finally, I opened the eye, then I saw a black part. Then I was like, wow, life is coming back. I keep praying, then finally she opened her eyes. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. So, that was, to me, I've been reading about Jesus raising the dead. I've been here reading about, I, I, I thought it was not really real. But that was a turning point of my scientific career to now being a pastor. Wow! Wow! That's amazing. That's amazing. So from scientist to pastor, how then did you now activate this whole pastor thing? What happened after that? Now, when you came back home, of course, news got spread, and I had a special unction upon me, so people started coming, started praying for them. Instant miracles started happening, and as they were opening the second lockdown, I had a voice telling me, all these people, where are you taking them? I was already calculating to be getting a, a taxi and take them to our church. Uh, I came from Zoe Kingdom Ministry. Uh, my pastor is called Apostle Geoffrey Okeng. So, that was a, a time of total confusion. But I gathered the courage and I went and talked to Apostle. I'm like, the Lord told me to feed these people. Then Pastor said, you? Uh, let me pray about it. To cut the story short, he prayed about it. And after two weeks, he told me, go ahead. All right. So when he told you, go ahead, did you go straight away and... No. you know get a venue what happened at no. that point and how did you then come into the mentorship what's what has that journey oh. been like yes now when pastor released us he called me and my wife and he prayed for us in his office with mommy then he said you guys you can go but he told me one wisdom he said go and start small and grow big that was a wisdom i will never forget from from him so we came, there was already a fellowship in our house, so we could meet in the house 5, 15, 10, not so frequent. But then at that time, we had already, one day we were watching one of the programs used to be run in worship abbey, called Fireplace. Yes. And Pastor Ari was there, and Apostle was there. Apostle was talking about church planting. And I told my wife, this pastor is talking about church planting, and we are planting a church. I think God has directed us to this. It was just a YouTube. So we got to know Worship Aves. Then one Sunday we came just to look for where is Worship Aves, who is Apostle Moses Mukesa. And then that day he was not around. But by the grace of God, we got Prophetess Angela and then Pastor Okulo. And we were in the lobby. We were actually going back. And they were like, guys, how are you? You know, in worship, there is environment of love. Yeah. Yeah. 
Whether they know you or they don't know you, they will love you, they will treat you as if you are their own. So they welcome us, then we talk a little, then we exchange the numbers. Then I told him what we are trying to do. And I'm like, okay, there is a program called Pastor's Mentorship. It's starting around February. So he, he, he got my number, then one day he sent me the link. Then we registered, me and my wife. The time we registered, of course, we were filling the database, how many people are in your church. You know, I reached how many people are in your church. I put 30. But in actual sense, mm. what it was like 10 adults and <laughs> at least five children. Then I'm like, at least 30 will sound better if I put 30. <laughs> so the real number was 15. Yeah, the real number was 15. But I'm like, ah, when you put 15, they might not accept us to join. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so when we join mentorship with 15 people, very discouraged people, confused. You even don't know whether you're a real pastor. You even don't know what to preach on a Sunday because you are studying metrology totally different. Your wife is an architect totally different. You have never pastored a church. You have never been assistant pastor. You have never been anything. You are just there. You don't know. You open the Bible, you don't know what to preach. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a pastor now. So, <laughs> by the grace of God, uh, we got a hall. We rented. The first hall was, they were charging us 160. Because the day I got that hall, my wife was not around. Since uh, my Luganda was still coming up, the woman was telling me 160 for two hours. In my mind, I thought the woman was saying 16,000. So I'm like, yeah, let's go, 16,000. The first Sunday, the woman said, I need 160. Pastor Daniel, no. <laughs> now, after, after preaching, yes. I had to start raising money to get the 160. Mm. But we paid 160, and then... Apostle had really introduced us to a book by Bishop Duck called How to Plant a Church. Bishop Duck said, go for a cheaper hole. So we started looking for another place. Yes. <laughs> because 160 was not going to work. Yes. Uh, and finally, we got a place. We planted our church on 5th of December, 2021. Uh, which means right now we are one year and four months. Yes. So when it joined mentorship, we started following. I remember we went back home. Then I talked to my wife and I said, this is a man God has sent to us. As others are coming for mentorship, for me, I was coming for a school. I took it in my mind. This is another university I've joined yes. to learn how to do church. So we grew. We started growing and we planned a missional community. But no mission, we were not understand. you know, they just tell you, go and do it. We were not understanding. We planted six missional communities at the beginning. Very excited, but wait, wait, don't, don't clap yet. <laughs> when we planted six missional communities, everybody was teaching whatever they want to teach. Just gather your people, teach what teach you feel anything. like teaching. Anything. It's in your house. When we came here, Paul started teaching us about Second Timothy 2.2. Then you went back and you tried to change. Even the date, everybody was meeting at their own time. On their own day. Now the process of changing, we lost all the six missional communities. We lost all the members, including the leaders. Wow. They left the church. Because now it is becoming intentional. Mm. So the first series, we failed completely. But we were coming for mentorship. Mm. Every time apostle tells us something, we go and do exactly what it tells us. Yes. We go and do exactly what it tells us. Then we, we relaunch. But this time around, we had a strategy. We are going to launch with new people, not from other churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fresh blood, who don't know anything, and we will be their teachers. So every time we get a message from here, we go and teach them. Remember, that's the only message they have. Yes they will start doing it. So they started doing it immediately. Mm. So we launched another three mission of communities. Yes. And then three mission of communities grow to five. Five mission of communities grow to 10. Mm -hmm. When we are celebrating our anniversary, our first year anniversary in December, we had 
uh, 200 members in the church. Wow. Wow, Pastor Daniel. Yes, 200 members in the church. From 15 to 200. Yes, within a year. Within a year. But as we keep learning more from Apostle, we became so intentional about missional communities. I know Apostle is a very busy man, but I know he's always available for MC on Wednesday. Mm. So the Lord told me, as long as you can access him and look at him, the grace will fall on you. Amen. Just keep accessing. He doesn't need to greet you. He doesn't need to talk to you, whatever, but just be where he is. The grace will fall on you. Now, from January, we were having like around 15 missional communities. But we grow from 15 missional communities to, right now, as we talk, we have 35 wow. missional communities. Wow. That is amazing growth. Yeah. Wow. 35. Wow. And I don't know how it works, but one thing I know, there's what you call transfer of grace. You cannot, if you can explain it, it is not grace. Mm. Yeah. That's yes. why I cannot explain it, but we have uh, 35. One day, a pastor was talking to us in the pastor's lunch, and he was talking to his disciples. Yeah, and I'm, I happen to be among them because I'm, I'm them. always there. Yes. Yeah. When he's talking to you, I'm always there. He told, guys, we are going to plant 100 churches this year. Then I took a note. I'm like, I am going to plant 100 missional communities this year. Yeah. Yes. And we went back home. He started punching hard, teaching about missional communities. And every time I also make an altar call for pastors, here, I also make the same altar call for MCs there. Every time I post to plant a church here, I also plant a missional community mm. there. Because at this time, that's where I can, we can manage. Wow. Because he told us, that, Pastor Daniel, you need to build the base before you start planting. And very soon, I believe, he's going to tell me to plant. Yay! Yeah. Very, very yeah. Can you give Pastor Daniel a huge, huge hand clap? My goodness, such a powerful story, such great following. Pastor Daniel, you're such a great example to follow. Thank you. Mommy, uh, maybe there's one thing I can add. Um, in our 35 missional communities, we have 320 disciples. Wow. Not congregation. 320 disciples. And then we have 620 people. In, in our the database church. in the church. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 35 missional communities, 620 members, 320 disciples, and you're going for 100 missional communities. We are hitting 100 missional communities. hitting 100. By the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Now we have another pastor here. Pastor, can you tell us about yourself? Tell us who you are. Tell us how long you've been in the ministry. Tell us where your church is located. How many people you had at the beginning. Just tell us that. Hello, everyone. I am Abbe Collins, lead pastor at Wonders Christian Center. Yes. My, uh, my story started at the age of seven. The doctors had told my mom that I would never live beyond the age of seven. She was a Catholic lady woman that loves her God in that dimension. So she took me at Miracle Center, Rubaga. By then the church was Bewembe. When I landed there, I see this tall man of God with an Afro hair. Then he said that every one of you is watching me and here you are receiving your miracle. From that time until now, the rest is history. Wow. I am breathing. I am well because the doctors had told my mom that I cannot leave. Blood would come out of my eyes, my nose, my ears. So she was co confused. So she took me to church. I got healed. Now, as I'm growing up, my mom tells me that there's a special call of God on your life. I told her, no, there's nothing God to do for God. <laughs> so she kept on stuck on me. So as we kept on going to church, I got so interested in what the man of God was doing. He would walk on the street, on the stage. He sings a song, and then he begins to prophesy, someone you're here, someone you're here. 
I said, wow, what is this? So I began to fall in love with that. Fast forward, I got to university. People kept on inviting me to preach at the university. I remember in 1998, a friend of ours in Nairobi wrote us a letter saying that, guys, come over and preach at our church. So we landed in Nairobi early in the morning around 6 a.m. But the pastor that had invited us, she came at around 4 p.m. Yeah, so things happen, I know things. <laughs> so she picked us up. I was telling the brother that we went with that. Hey, the pastors in Nairobi are amazing people. Yeah, I, until now that, that, that picture is stuck on my brain. But on Sunday morning, she serves a heavy meal, a breakfast that was so cool. So she told us that, guys, enjoy your meal. Me, I'll be preaching. She said, okay, you go ahead and preach. So we ate our breakfast. So we go to church. She kept on singing one song, two songs. She's not finishing the songs. All of a sudden, she hijacked me. She said, you are preaching. I said, you told us you're going to preach. You fed us with breakfast. We are filled up. What are we going to do? But anyway, uh, a scripture came into my mind. Then I preached on. So the service was supposed to end at around midday. But uh, it went up to four. Oh, what a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 4 p.m. But fast forward, God kept on calling me and I was running away. Calling me and I was running away, not to plant a church. But finally, in 2010, I'd come from South Africa. I'd watched, uh, yes, <laughs> I had watched World Cup and then I came back to Uganda. I entered into prayer and fasting almost uh, I'm scared to say the number of days that I fasted for, but a uh, 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 hundred days. Of course, there were, I was drilling 12 hours. But anyway, I went to my pastor, Pastor Robert Kayanji. I told him that I feel God is sending me to Kauku. So I sowed a seed, and then we came to Kauku. And then in Kauku, we entered into different places. And then I landed into this place that it was a tavern. People drink there dance from there. There was strippers in that place. So I told the brother that we're together. I told him that God is telling me to start a church here. In the bar? In the bar. In the bar. And the entire walls were littered with funny pictures. Mm. Funny pictures. I remember one day we were doing church and then the people on their hind, they were staying in lodges. You can imagine the activities that happen in lodges. So this woman comes with that towel on her body as we are singing and shouting. I don't know whether the shouting affected the towel, but the towel landed on the ground. And uh, yes, so she shouted and said, Neva Sumba, Tubakoye, we are tired of you pastors. We kept on singing and then the landlord had to stretch the amount of money we pay monthly from 100,000 to 200 raising yes what a shock <laughs> raising 200 then was like war i remember one time we raised almost 700,000 and then one of the brothers that we were serving got together he happened to sneak on the money and then he stole the money yes my our administrator then she came crying in my face and she said that Apostle Colin, me, I'm giving up on ministry if we have thieves in the church. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell her that things will happen here, but we have to move on. Fast forward, we kept on dwelling in that place, doing church there almost for five years. And then God helped us to go where we are right now. We had an anniversary. A friend of mine, he gave me a car, a beautiful car. By that time, it was my first car. So when I received the car, the people were so excited in the church. But I wasn't excited. I looked at Violet. She was super excited. I Your looked wife. at her. She was super excited. But deep down, I know that the first things belong to the Lord, the first fruits. So we drove off the car. So as I'm driving, I'm evangelizing to her that, you know this car, you know this car, it belongs to God. You know this car, we are going to give it to God. Fast forward, we sell off the car, we made a down payment to the property. 
of the, the land. Wow. Yes. So we paid on the land. And then another pastor, Pastor Tony, also sold his car because we lead by example. People see us and they do. Monkey see, monkey do. So he saw me sell my car and then he sold his car and then we bought off a piece of land. It was almost 50 by 100 where Wonders Christian Center is right now. Mm. So we bought that property. We didn't have urinals. Everyone would go somewhere in the bush. In the bush. Yes, in the <laughs> bush. But I told people wow. that you are not going to make long calls, only short calls. <laughs> Local calls, not international <laughs> calls. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> I re yes, I remember one day I'd gone to make my, my call. And then I bounced into the sister's face. She was coming also from making the call. I, uh, <laughs> I said, we have to change our phone calls right now. These stories of church planting are so good. Yes. <laughs> and then in 20, 2016, the man of God came to Kawuko, Pastor Robert Kayanja, and then he preached a sermon, and then he said, this church, in the name of Jesus, you are expanding this way, this way, this way, this way. So the following Sunday, my sermon was, we are expanding this way, this way, this way, this way. So I kept on telling people that we are expanding this way, this way, this way. Fast forward, uh, I mean, in a certain country, I'm having a conversation with Pastor David Wasser. He's my dear brother, my friend. So he tells me that, you know what, Apostle Colin, you need to come to this conference. So those of us who have grown up in church, it looks like we have our own pride that needs to be deflated. Mm. There's a pride that catches us because you grew up in church. So he kept on pushing me that you need to come to this conference. I asked him where. He told me here. And then he told me that, but you have to pay. He said, how ha. much? He told me that $50. I said, I find that devil <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> but what Pastor David Waswa did, he paid for me. Such a gracious man of God. He paid for me. So I came, I came in transform. And from that time until now, I am enjoying my salvation. I am enjoying my salvation. I am enjoying my transformation. Now, when we are doing the, the conference, I remember after a space of a few months, up more, put on, uh, on Facebook that, hey pastors, hey leaders, if you want to join the mentorship, please inbox me. Yes. So I went to his inbox, then I dropped a message. Fast forward, I was put on a WhatsApp group I come in the mentorship. Everything was new. Everything was new. Rev. Ma. At that point, how big was your church? Because I think it was like 10 years at that point. Yeah, it was, we were like 10 years. You know what this guy has? He's a good person. He's good at conversing. But me, I keep on jumping here and there. But I must tell you, I'm married to Violet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we enjoy it, Pastor. Yes, we enjoy I, uh, it. <laughs> Pastor Tony, you, you, you took all the light of the table So I'm, I'm scrambling. But anyway, I am married to Violet, and together we have four children. Yes, four children. Well, we are doing girls, girls. One day, Violet was saying that I don't understand this girls, girls, girls. So the third born, she was expecting a boy. And then, boom, a girl came. And then she said that, hey, Apostle, we are doing girls, girls. I told her that this girl thinks is coming from my father. Mm. Yes, my father, <laughs> he left almost 34 kids. Wow. Yeah. And we are only six boys. So when I saw girls that are coming, I said, I have no problem with it. This is where I come from. But fast forward, we happen to get another son. Mm. So we have three girls and one son for awesome. children. So before I joined the mentorship, we are a struggling church. People struggling with marriages, with commitment, with loyalty. They are fighting me. 
I don't want to fight them, they are fighting me. I don't want to curse them, they are cursing me. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy on me. But deep down I said, I'm not going to fight no person. And I, I remember one time I was in Sweden and then Mutis, my administrator, she said that a group of two ladies have come here. They have written a resignation letter. They are leaving church. So I come back from Sweden. I'm taking a shower. And then I say, whatever I'm going to do to them, they will see it. So I landed in the service. These two women are there. I look at them. So I kept preaching. And then the Holy Ghost took over. Can you imagine you want to fight someone and the Holy Ghost is telling you, bless them. The anointing pastor was so strong that I was praying on them, prophesying on them, big things that are contrary with my mind. And I prayed for them. They left. But when they left, things began to change. You know, yeah, things began to change. So we are a struggling church. We are almost 50 people almost, struggling. Almost. Almost. Almost for for security details, <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. So now <laughs> they send us that document where you, you're supposed to fill in the the people in your church. I struggled with the temptation. I said, should I put on a hundred? Should I? Should I not? And I said, hey, but these people, they could be quite an English speaking community church, they, 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 they will check me out. I said, I put on 50. So we joined the mentorship. Apostle began to teach us. He stretches us with the coaches. Like I would use this word. We went through a good circumcision. You, you see, when you come to the mentorship, you are circumcised. There is a, the teachings there, they will work on you, but for your good. Yeah, they will work on you for your good. Like one person said that to know and not to do is not to know. So you come to the mentorship, apostle sharpens you, the coaches sharpen you, and then they stretch you to go back and count the people. Yeah, I count the people. I count the kids. I count the women. We count the men. We, we never used to have cars, but even these days, I count the cars. Mm. Amen. Uh, we, we, never, we, 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 we could count... The, we could count people, but we were careful. I said, can we count this one? So we began to count people and the things and the salvations and the miracles. Yes. So we kept on growing from 54 where we were stretched. As I'm talking right now, when we entered the mentorship, we were only one location. One location and we were cool. We could come and talk our English. We were, we were just a cool church. Mm. But you see, when you come in the face of Apmo or Rebma and the coaches, you are stretched. Everything around here will stretch your thinking. So I go back, I tell the pastors that we are going to plant locations. Okay. Yeah. So there was one young girl who looked at me like this. I said, locations, <laughs> you want to kill us now. This is the way you're going to kill us. <laughs> and actually some people left. But those that have stayed they are planting locations. They are planting locations. So as I'm talking right now, we are five locations. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. And uh, by the special grace of God, come December, we will be 12 of locations. Wow. Yeah, because, because, this is our, uh, on Friday we had a leaders gathering, a copycat of the, of the leaders camp here. Yeah, what we see here is what we do there. We, we, we are copying and we are following hard. It is the joy of the teacher not only to see what he is teaching, but also to see what is teaching being done by the students. So we are copying. So I, I look at the leaders. And I tell them that, look, guys, I don't look at you as people. I look at you as change agents. 
I look at you as church planters. I look as you, at you as millionaires. And you are going to plant churches. So the recent one that we have planted is almost uh, two, two weeks back. It is in Buea, Blonde. Wow. Yes. Pastor Abbe Collins, you said you came from one church. Yes. And now you're five churches. Yes. What was the process of starting those churches? And what story can you tell of something transformational that has happened in one of those church plants? Wow. Now, when you come to the mentorship, you are not coming to spectate. You are coming to. You hear, you go back and do. So when I came to the mentorship, I go back to my leaders and I tell them that we are going to plant missional communities. Listen, guys, missional communities is the vehicle that is going to plant more churches across the world. Amen. There should never be any doubt about that. Amen. So I tell my leaders that if you plant a missional community, look at it as a church. So everyone that is planting a missional community, the end in mind is a church. So I tell them that we are planting churches and then they go out. Actually, there is a pastor here, Pastor Margaret. She went in, uh, in Ibuswa to plant an MC. As of now, it is a location. Wow, wow. One of her leaders, we had an interview like this the other Friday, an interview like this, and they were being interviewed. So one of the leaders at Pastor Margaret's church, she said a story that really hit me real hard. She said that her and her daughter, the baby, they went to start a missional community. And people were not coming. So she goes to the road to bring in people. She goes to the well to bring in people. To compel them. Finally, people came into her missional community. Which is almost 50, 20 people. So, but this young girl says that she writes all the names of the people in the missional community. After when the service for missional committees ended, she begins to pray for every person on the list, name by name. Wow. Now, when she said that, I got a shocker of a lifetime. See, me, I deal with 12 disciples, but every one of them is called to make disciples under them. Mm. Now, when Margaret was telling that story, I got so hit. I said, okay, teacher, I never wear is mm. we, we still have people that are still born again. So she prays for her people name by name, name by name. And then on Saturday, she goes to visit them. Because on Saturday at Wonders Christian Center and all the locations, I push the people to visit the people to evangelize and then bring in the people in church on Sunday. Wow. Yes. Pastor Abbe Collins, lastly, how many people are you all together in the five churches? How many missional communities all together? How many disciples all together? When we started the MCs, we were four people at Wonders Christian Center, rather four MCs, missional committees. As of now, Wonders Christian Center, we have almost 35, 36 missional communities. Wow. Is that just... At the location where yes. you are or yes, at all the, together? Yes, at the location. And then if you add up all the other locations, are, there are almost 20 plus missional communities. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. And members of the church, how many and, are uh, they when you put all the five locations when together? When you pull all the five locations, we are almost 800 plus people. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. What would you say, what would you give as your last words to pastors here? who are wondering, am I able to plant a church? Is it too difficult? Can I do it? Is it impossible? What would be your last words to them? Uh, I want to say this, that uh, before I entered into the mentorship, the church was going far. But when I entered the mentorship, the church is going further. Pastors, when you enter the mentorship, your ministry is going to go farther. That's a small wisdom. Number two, the only way to start is to start. You don't have to think and pray about it. I remember there was a young girl I was telling her that go and start an embassy. She was saying that, Pastor, let me think about it. Let me pray about it. But there were other people who were very far. I called them. They jumped on. Like a story. Can I give two stories? 
yesterday another leader pastor pastor audrey she she was recovering from fever and a terrible cough she was bedridden but yesterday she went and planted another missional community and as i'm talking right now they have 15 people in that new mc wow wow and then when when we went to nsambia chirombe that place was crazy mm. nobody wants to go there people would drink from morning to sunset they urinate on themselves they fight all over now this young man sam khan i think he's here he's in the background there i tell him that guy you can go there and do the work of the lord i pray over you you go and do it with pastor audrey so they go to chirombe we call it right now chirokoli so the people who used to drink who used to fight the former urinators are now gospel alligators wow wow yeah, they're wow, wow, they irrigating wow, the wow, gospel of jesus wow, 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 and they are <laughs> there are many amazing stories pastor wow yes Thank you so much for listening to these awesome stories. Can you just stand up and give them a rousing, rousing thank you for doing such a great job of planting and growing their churches. Thank you so much, gentlemen.